<laughs> hey everyone, today we're stripping down and then rebuilding the duty slipstream. We're going to be doing it up with a bit of like a clunker style to it. So factory it came with these back swept handlebars. They're quite wide actually, which is quite nice. Um, so it's basically like a hybrid or a cruiser bike. It comes with cantilever brakes and 700c wheels. These cyclocross tires went factory. It's a 21 speed drivetrain, quite low spec components, but the frame I thought would be quite a nice base for a build. I really like the sloping tubes to it. And it also has a bit of patina, which I think suits the clunker look. It has internal brake routing for the rear brake. And yeah, 4130 chromoly tubing. It's a quite a nice frame really. And it still has the GT typical triple triangle design, which I thought was really cool to see it like with these sloping tubes. So it sort of already has that sort of clunker look basically because they used to use old cruisers and stuff and just thrash them down the mountain. So I do like the blue, but I think a little bit of paint sort of in the rear half of the bike would be cool. Like a different color sort of faded in. It did come with this Blackburn mountain rack, which is like a nice little find as well. And there you can see the shim <laughs> in the seat tube. So this is a 25.4 suspension seat post. I do quite like these brake levers. They're sort of like curved to go along with the frame. So I think one of those will stay. So plenty of tire clearance out the back. This is with a 35 millimeter tire, but it was quite deflated here. The front has even more clearance. Um, I've already tried a 29 tire, which is about two inches wide and it seems to clear okay. Um, in the rear, it's a little bit tight though, so I might have to improvise something there. So quite a lot of the parts are going to be swapped out, and then it'll be like a single speed or a seven speed clunker. I'm just spraying some WD-40 on some things that normally get stuck. I don't have any penetrating oil left, so WD-40 is like the next best thing. Throwing it in all the bolts and nuts and stuff, and then taking the crank caps off bring it on the crank bolts and then trying to get some on the bottom bracket you can also put some down the seat tube through like a brake bottle cage bolt hole or um, just through like the seat tube by taking out the seat post so these cables were pretty crusty and um, dusty I'm pretty surprised that they survived that test ride this internal cable routing actually works pretty nicely. I fed a cable back through it just to see if it was like um, like a closed system, and it is. So you can quite easily feed brake cables through. So the cool steam wedge was stuck a little bit, so you just give it like a little tap on the top, and then the bolt sort of pushes the wedge down. They get a bit of rust built up in the steerer tube. Everything else was actually pretty loose. This headset top cap was loose. I don't know why it was not as rusted as the rest of it. It must be a different material or replaced or something. I hate that little nub that comes on the washers. I normally just grind them off. But the headset inside was in pretty good condition. No abnormal wear marks or anything. Just a kind of dry, of dry grease anyway in the headset. So that should clean up nicely. That's a pedal strap, like a toe clip strap. Funny, that was actually off a GT. 
I just use that to secure like one of the crank arms just so I can get both hands on the tool. It makes guiding it and removing it a bit easier that way. So sure enough, this drive side came off pretty easily. You can see a little bit of the WD-40 leaking out there. So taking out the bottom bracket, I just use a crank bolt, basically just to hold the tool down, then a couple of washers. I went to undo it, then found out that it was pretty well finger tight anyway. So I just used my hand to take out the bottom bracket. And sure enough, on the drive side, it was practically loose. A loose bottom bracket could almost be a bad sign. Um, I would be a bit more concerned if this was an alloy frame. It's just showing you <laughs> how free that was. Basically, like a loose bottom bracket, it could be damaged threads or something like that. So it pays to inspect the threads if the bottom bracket is loose. So this bolt here, it felt pretty tight, and I figure it feels like it's going to snap. And then it started loosening up, and it started loosening even more. And then it just let go. Luckily, it snapped in a way that the stand could actually be removed anyway. So anyway, this is the Nexus wheel that I'm using. It came off for like a parts bike that I picked up for about 90 New Zealand dollars. So it's a coaster brake, seven speed wheel. I've got some moto bars for it, which really gives it that clunker vibe. And then an old brook seat as well. I don't know if this will suit me or the bike, but um, I've got it anyway. It's really old brooks. I think it's from about the forties maybe. And then just some bear trap pedals, because I think that sort of adds to the, the clunker vibe a bit as well. Did an old BMX chain ring. Or maybe the Surly one. I don't really know which sort of gearing would be right. These are the tyres that I have for the bike. They're both 29 by 2.0s. One is a Continental Race King, and the other is a Vittoria Seguado. So the Vittoria will be up front to have that steering grip. And then the rear Continental just for that little bit of speed. The Race King Outback should help a little bit with speed on pretty much every terrain while still being pretty grippy off-road. Because ideally I really want to be able to ride this on a variety of terrain. I don't want it to be like a strictly off-road bike. So for that I'll need some tyres that sort of a nice compromise to speed to grip. So moving on to cleaning up the frame. I don't want to get rid of the patina, but I sort of wanted to keep the frame around like as long as possible. So a bit of rust converter does a really good job at this. It basically just turns the rust black. Like you scuff over the rust and then use some rust converter. This is just like a, a transfer or a scuff mark that I didn't really want. So I just use some like a mild rubbing compound to remove it. Some polish might be able to get it off as well, like some tea cut or something. Then the rest of the bike would be left pretty much the same. So you can see there the rust had turned black. Starting to assemble the bike now. At this point the paint hadn't actually shown up, um, otherwise I would have painted the back half of the bike. Moving on to the moto bars. The black does look pretty good, but I prefer it to be raw. I think it would sort of suit the, the look I'm going for a bit better. So just using some paint stripper to strip all the paint off. This you just brush on and leave it for a little bit, and then the paint starts like softening and wrinkling up. From there you just scrape it all off. Try to use something that isn't going to scratch the steel underneath. I'm just using a bit of card here, so you can see really like no effort is required to get it off. But some paint jobs are a bit more stubborn, especially ones that have primer and stuff underneath, so they can take like a few applications to really get through um, back down to the raw steel or material underneath. 
So after paint stripping the handlebars, I thought I probably don't want any rust underneath the grips. So I masked them off a bit and then spray painted them quickly. And then moved on to selecting a stem. So I had a few different shapes and sizes. I could use shims on the 25.4 clamp to fit the 22 ones. But I ended up going with this Nitto stem and quill adapter combo. The look and length just fit this just better than everything else. I do really like these chunky stems, but it didn't quite suit the look of the bike. This skinny one suited quite nicely, but it was a little bit too long. So yeah, this Nitto one was just about perfect. So you can cover up the coil converter with like a bell or some spaces or something. Shoving on the grip shifter. So I don't want the actual grip on it just yet. You can just see the bare plastic grip shifter. So I'll be doing something sort of custom later on. So just one brake lever on this bike. I am going to have a front brake on it just for a bit of safety. While it doesn't look as good and traditional having a front brake on it, um, I like having a, a backup brake because not dying is it's pretty cool. <laughs> so cleaning out the brake pivots, I just use this as like a, a fine, not steel wool, but synthetic wool. Just makes the brakes feel as smooth as you can, really. And cleaning out the posts themselves. Use the same synthetic wool. This is like the fine one. Moving on to servicing the front wheel, nothing too special here. Taking it apart went pretty smoothly. Um, I do quite like this front wheel, it's nothing special, like it doesn't have any markings on it at all. It's like a Shimano or Shimano coffee hub, but it's in good condition, like um, it's been serviced at some point, or it certainly hasn't had much use. <laughs> it's hard to tell really. But the internals were in good condition, all the ball bearings were nice. And there was actually still grease in there, it wasn't all dried up and disgusting. So I actually reused all the ball bearings and everything, I didn't have to swap any cones or nothing. Just cleaned it out, re-greased it and put it all back together. So by the end of the video I'll go through and add up all the costs of the bike. Just to sort of share like what goes into these builds. Um, this is probably one of the cheaper ones. And keeping in mind that the end result will be in New Zealand dollars. So I'd have to convert it into your local currency to get like a fair idea. So I have that near the end of the video as I go over, do like a bit of a wrap up of the bike. But for now there's more servicing to do. So you'll notice here that I didn't actually clean the externals of the hub. Um, I just wanted to keep like some of the patina and the, the age and wear sort of to go along with the clunker look of the bike that I was going for. Well I do like the blue and like the patina that's on the bike currently. I do want like a little bit extra colour. So I'm going to throw some purple glow on it. It's not like a fluorescent or anything like that, it's just quite a nice purple going by the photos. Pretty cringy company motto. So I want to do basically like the back half of the bike. So I've got the tire on just to check clearance and it's okay up here. Don't know if you can see. Yeah, so it's okay up the top, but down the bottom, 
it just touches so the wheels buckled a little bit so to create like a little bit of extra room here I'm gonna dimple in the chain stays just a little bit so I haven't done this before but I'm certainly not the first person to do this basically it's just cold dimpling the rear chain stays people like to use like vice grips or something like that just with like a bolt or um, other rod basically just squeeze it in a little bit I used some masking tape to mark out the points where I wanted to crimp in a little bit so it was really just about an inch that I wanted to dent in the chain stays I didn't really want to do too much you can go pretty far but I just wanted like a couple of millimeters extra clearance so the first side went pretty good I did do a bit of testing on a spare frame but the outside of this it actually crimped in or sort of dented a little bit so I definitely recommend just being really careful or using like some steel flat bar sort of to protect it a bit you can see there on the back side that it actually messed it up a little bit um, so the second time I used a file I don't know why it did that on this bike because on the trial one it didn't do any damage but anyway I didn't have any flat stock steel so I just used the file um, wrapped up in some tape and that did a really good job at protecting the outside of the chainstay then you can see there I gained a couple of millimeters each side of clearance so now even with like the buckle it wouldn't smash the chainstays um, but I definitely would take out that that buckle of the wheel from here just scuffing out the paint I'm not going to strip it down to respray it, um, I sort of just want to blend it in over. So just dusting on some white primer, just doing it quite lightly. Um, this primer didn't really go on too evenly, but after a few coats it was quite a nice even coat. And then I did about three or four coats of the purple over the top. I'm not going to go into great details of servicing the Nexus Hub. It's pretty simple to disassemble and like take out the core. Basically just taking off the dry side stuff. Almost caught it. I will be changing out this rear cog to a 22 tooth and then I'm going to have a 40 tooth chain ring. So just disassembling the left hand side now. This is the coaster brake. Just pulling all that apart. It actually looks to be in pretty good condition. No abnormal wear. Um, I do have the roller brake grease to replace all the grease and everything as well that sort of gets spread throughout the whole unit really there is like a special oil that you can use on the nexus hub but really um, a lot of people just use atf to sort of oil bath them so that's what i'll be using i've used it before and haven't really had any issues but i've never had a nexus like super long term um, do your own research about this but i trust the people that have recommended it and um, done their own testing, so we're just going to see what what happens. I've got a spare um, Nexus 7 speed anyway, so not really concerned. Just letting the ATF drain off from there, then cleaning up like the coaster brake stuff. This coaster brake grease is really quite sticky. It's like a high temp grease. I'm just cleaning it all off just to make sure that there's no like metal particles and stuff floating around there just to give it like the best chance of like a nice long life in my ownership <laughs> then making sure that that spring is off center I just thought that it's probably safest rather than possibly opening up and getting dislodged so greasing the coaster brake you really just grease out of it this little tub of grease was like 30 or 40 dollars I couldn't find the bigger one that was cheaper so I thought I'd grab it and then just find like a grease that's like a similar viscosity and use that from then on um, sort of just like a trial method so that grease that I showed earlier um, apparently the shadow clutch grease is the same as the um, internal gear hub grease it's basically uh, like a high temp grease think 
that doesn't um, stick as much because there's quite a few pores and stuff inside of an internal gear hub. You don't want a sticky grease in there. So changing out the gearing, this is a Stemi Archer 22 tooth cog, but they fit on um, Nexus hubs pretty easily. They're like a direct swap over. Putting the circlet back on, this was a bit fiddly because I didn't find my circlet pliers, but I just ended up spreading it and getting it on. Then painting the rear wheel because I don't really like the black. Just painting it with the primer and then some silver spray paint to match the front. And then putting all the drive side stuff back together. This is just a shifter mechanism. There's only really one way that you can put it back on, so it's pretty straightforward. So fitting the Nexus into the vertical dropout frame, um, it's a bit of a fiddly thing. You can get the no-turn washers, but they didn't show up in time. Um, the no-turn washers to fit the vertical dropouts. And then it's just like a bit of magic gear ratio finding, so that you don't need a chain tensioner. Um, from here, just cleaning up some of the overspray. And then I didn't want the paint to be like immaculate and nice and clean because then it wouldn't match the front. So I scuffed up some of the rear paint. Just taking some coarse, I think it was about 80 grit, and then going over with some 400 grit to sort of blend um, some scratch marks into the frame. And then tearing it up where you normally see like the chain rub or the chain ring rub. And stabbing it a few times with the screwdriver. It looks kind of natural. So going back to the no turn washer situation quickly. Um, basically, I didn't use them. So they don't really fit the vertical dropouts properly anyway because of like the taper on it. And the no turn washers, they just have like square sides. So a bit of JB Weld can sort of stop that washer from moving. I haven't had any issues with mine yet. So I'll let you know if there's any issues in the future, but I haven't heard any like clunking or axle rotation or anything. So throwing in the bottom bracket, this is just the factory one, just to test it out for chain line. It's 116 millimeters and it actually turned out pretty perfect. So I'll just order another one a new one because this one it just spun way too smoothly so I guess there's no longer any grease left <laughs> in it. Mounting the chain ring I mounted this on the inside just to give me the best chance of finding a nice chain line. This is a 1 and 1 8 old school BMX um, Suntour chain ring so it does match up nicely to the rear cog that you find on most Nexus drive systems and then just used a 1 8 chain to match that. So I bought a six meter length of KMC chain. This is one eighth chain sold as like garage door. Um, chain. I also have some half link. So that's just to try and get the best tension. I didn't need to use any half links though. The only issue I had was the cassette joint on the Nexus hub sort of clipped the um, chain. So I just gave that a little bend to get it out of the way. That only got in the way because I don't have the correct um, no turn washers for the Nexus hub. So it should sit like parallel to the chain stay. So making a custom grip shifter grip I wanted to do sort of like a toggle switch to activate the grip shifter this is just polymorph which is like a moldable plastic you basically just heat it up to about 60 degrees Fahrenheit and then it becomes translucent and moldable in hindsight um, this didn't work out but I didn't really know until testing it so once you had the cable on it didn't really have enough leverage to shift it properly so it shifted one way, but then turning back, it didn't um, didn't have enough mechanical advantage there. So fitting the seat post, it was about a 26.4, 26.5, sort of like incorrectly sized, um, to fit into the 26.6 uh, seat tube. But I just used a bit of a shim there, and it fit really nicely, actually. So that's a Brooks saddle that I'll be using on this bike. It's a Brooks Old Professional. So the one that I had for it 
didn't quite fit properly. Um, like it's a bit, it's wide for me, but um, it looks really goofy on the bike. So I just went with that skinnier version. It fits me better, and I think it just looks better on the bike as well. Those three spunk saddles, they sort of feel a bit like wavery and goofy under the bike. Under, well, I guess under my butt anyway. So I tend to like the feel of the fixed brook saddles more. You can just feel the rear end of the bike over like rough terrain a bit better. So just attaching the rear gear cable now. These quite are easy to attach and adjust system. It has like a quick release so you can easily detach the rear cable um, to get the rear wheel out. Basically you just tighten it down, sort of set it into place and then use the barrel adjuster to line up the gears. So there's like a gearing mark, so you shift it into fourth gear and just make sure that this mark lines up. If it doesn't, then you just adjust the barrel adjuster until it sort of lines up perfectly. There is like a bit of discrepancy, but really just turn the barrel adjuster until it lines up perfectly. That way you know that the gears are gonna click in properly. From here, it's just adjusting the front brake, getting it all sorted. Um, I think I'm gonna change this up a little bit I do prefer to use a gear cable as the straddle cable and I also just really like cool stop brake pads. I use the salmon compound or like the mixed salmon and black compound cool stop pads. They tend to be the work the best for me. They work in like mud, rain and everything. So I'll get some of those for the bike at some point just to have a better front brake. But for now this will do and it'll certainly get me through. And then that's pretty much the bike all together. I do make a few tweaks, but I'll talk about those in a little bit. So I did get that front spring on the Brook saddle and I managed to make up a block out of polymorph so that it would fit the adjustable seat post, like the not the candlestick style. Um, but I just didn't end up liking it. So this is the bike all done. I do have a cyclocross event and some other riding footage that you'll see. And then at the end of the video, I'll talk a bit about it and sort of the things that I've changed. As you can see here, I do have a different gear shifter set up. It's basically polymorph with an old Shimano 600 Arabesque um, down tube shifter sort of shoved in there. And it works so much better than the, the toggle switch thing that I initially started with. I do really like using this, but I think it would be nicer sort of forward more because my knee does hit it if I'm going up like a really steep hill in first gear. It clicked it into second gear one time during the race, which kind of sucked. Um, I have been trying to shift it without load on, so I'll just completely stop pedaling and then shift gears. I just feel like it's a bit better on the internal gear system that way. So I do really like having the internal gear or the Nexus 7 speed. It's so nice being able to shift from a standpoint, especially like at <laughs> traffic lights and that sort of stuff. Um, anyway, this is the cyclocross event. It's just a fun event. You can enter like on any bike, so there's no tire width um, restrictions or, or yeah. speed things or anything like that. No craziness. So um, people were doing it on track cross bikes. Last year I did a couple of the events on my old hard rock, which was a disc bike, which I have done a video on and there's some footage of the event in that but anyway I'll chat to you at the end of the video and I'll go over like a bit of a cost breakdown as well <laughs> so I'll see you in a bit Looks forever dizzying ah. Oh where? <laughs> it's so slippery <laughs> I clipped it the first round. <laughs> uh, yeah, the coyote doesn't really sweep back. Yeah, like it sort of negates itself. <laughs> Yeah. I'm like, I was like, here's one. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs>
I was going to ask if you like them. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. I think my seat moved. I didn't do well down this hill. No, it's a <laughs> coaster break. I guess. Oh, yeah. yeah, we're good. Have a ride. Thank you. No worries. Uh, yes. So that was the event. It was really fun. Met a few new people and it was good to chat to Robbie in person. We have talked um, online and stuff, but it's always good to see people in person, check their bikes out and stuff. Robbie has a really cool custom, I think it's their um, touring bike, but they decided to um, test it out on some cyclocross as well. So that was cool to see. The only real issue I had with my bike was the seat post. Um, so I'll probably end up getting another one and one that fits the frame properly without a shim. But the real issue was in the clamping um, mechanism. So basically there's like a little washer in it and the washer is split. So it ended up like separating a little bit and then the seat declined or reclined actually backwards. And then also the seat started coming down because I didn't, didn't do the seat post up enough, which isn't really the shim's fault. Um, I just didn't do it up tight enough when I adjusted it before the event. Um, so it ended up being only about four or five inches of seat post out of the frame by the end of the ride and um, that was pretty uncomfortable but i fixed all that and then went on to another ride the next day so this is out at ambry farm where i did the pre-build ride video if you haven't seen that check it out the bike is definitely a lot better now but it was still fun in stock form um, even off-road so it was great, like gravel cruiser. The tires that were on it formed really nicely, apart from they just weren't, they didn't have as much volume as these larger ones. So they didn't soak up as many bumps and stuff, but the grip on them was actually pretty impressive. So yeah, go check that out if you want. I'll leave a link to that in the description. But just like the last ride, I'll sort of leave you to just watch this and then I'll come back at the end of it. I'll see you in a bit.
<laughs> Go. So all up, the bike should have costed just under $400. That's factoring in some things that I didn't pay for, like things that I had in my um, pipe spin and that sort of stuff. So the bike was $70, Nexus stuff about $90, chain rings $25, chain 10 
pedals 45, highs 74, bars 60, and the cables and pads are 20. That's all in New Zealand dollars too. So it looks kind of junky, it's got a bit of money in, but not too much. Oh, we gotta go that way. Oh well. I'll take the next left. So I'm pretty happy with what I have into the bike. Um, like I said, a Schwinn would be quite a bit more expensive than this. Chickens, oh, <laughs> chickens over the trail. Um, like a Schwinn, a Schwinn would normally cost a couple of hundred New Zealand dollars okay, uh, for something that's pretty reasonable. I have bought a frame before off a of mate. I can't remember how much I paid for that. Up we go. Um, but yeah, really stoked with the bike. It started off as a ten dollar GT which cost $60 to get sent up to me. Then that escalated into, yeah, about $400. Um, but that's just a guide though. I didn't actually spend $400 on, on that. Um, I did have some parts like, kicking around in my parts okay. Yep. Anyway, I'll see you at the end of the video and chat a little bit more. That was not fun. I had my feet like in the wrong position and as it went over the jump the, um, the little rise <laughs> made me scared because I had my feet back a little bit too far <laughs> Yuck. So that was kind of scary. <laughs> oh, there's two point zeros. There's twenty nine at tires. That extra width is so comfy. So nice. Oh, <laughs> went for the front brake there. Um, my feet were in the wrong position again because I was pedaling. I wasn't looking ahead. Duck. Really trying not to skid because I don't want to mess the trails up. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, that's so fun. Whoop. <laughs> that was... <laughs> oh, that's so much more fun. So much better with this setup. Even the shifting, um, it sort of makes you want to use one gear more. And I really like steam shifters. So one reason why I changed it to down there. I might try and mount it to the stem because on steep climbs with it in low gear, my knee can lick it. Um, So I think it's like a hose clamp with the same sort of barring thing, so it sticks out the side here. Then I'll have to orientate it so it shifts to like here and then goes down. Because right now it would um, get in the way. So thank you to Robbie. Robbie actually had that idea to mount the shifter on the stem to get it up a bit further forward. Which is to be like quirky and odd still. Overall the bike performed really well. Happy with the 29 inch tires and the 7 speed Nexus and the handlebars and everything. So these handlebars are a moto bar. I'll leave a link to them in the description. Trips are made by Colt and ODI. They're the band's waffle cruiser grip. Quite a nice grip. They're um, quite thick so you need to get hands to cut them on. Some stickers from Gary and Gary's project. 
Coke's good at it. Customer Flipper is from Neko Cycles. I'll leave a link to the Instagram in the description. And I'll try to think of any other parts that I can cut in the video. Leave them down there too. Alright, this is pretty much the end of the video. Thanks for checking it out. The next one is going to be of a Cannondale build. Yeah.